Hello and welcome back for another Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood Dungeon Boss Guide with me, Mioni. Today we look at the trial, The Pool of Tribute. This is a face-to-face -face battle with Susano, a particularly taxing story mode primal. Susano has three phases, with the first being repeated somewhat for the third phase, only with more of everything happening. This fight intends to overwhelm you with things to avoid and places to stand, so let's simply look at how to avoid them and what you need to do. Several water AoEs will need to be avoided on the ground, as usual with anything that looks like pain that gets displayed on the floor. Additionally, another move is a series of laser beams, usually in groups of two or four. These will keep changing and exploding rather fast, so you will need to be on your feet to avoid them in succession. You can help this a little by spreading slightly, as the lasers seem to be drawn to grouped up players. The next major ability is where Susano marks a player. This player will need to line up near the boss. This player will get knocked back, but will leave a safe zone line in the center of where they faced and to their rear. For this reason, looking at the boss directly allows for more DPS on the boss from melee classes, so ensure to be aware of this and move dependent on your location. Once the player is knocked back, that same player will then be marked with a stack icon. This player will then need to run back into melee range and stack up with the group to reduce the damage from an explosion that will happen when this debuff fades. This is the most powerful damage ability and needs to be prepared for with cooldowns and AoE healing. At around 60-ish percent, the boss transitions into Phase 2. Here, Susano raises into the background as a large cinematic beast with a huge sword. He will then attempt to strike down with this sword and cleave the group to death. So here we have two different things to look at. There's specific things for the tank and the DPS to do separately. Firstly, the tank will see a new active time maneuver button on their screen on the new target, which they must spam to prevent the raid from being killed. The faster they press it, the more likely they are to succeed. If they're slow, then failure to do so will kill players off one by one. As you can see with me here, it chose me twice in a row. DPS, however, need to DPS like mad on this only attackable point near the sword to meet the DPS check. If you fail to meet the DPS check or the tank check, this will be a wipe. If you do survive this, then you essentially get the first phase again, which is now named Phase 3. It has the same mechanics, the same stack line, the knockbacks and horrible AoEs to heal through, but it's just faster and more frantic. The only addition in this Phase 3 is an ability that marks a player with an arrow. This player is made into a rock. Two other rocks will appear next to this player and he will shuffle these rocks around. You must remember what rock the player is inside and DPS that rock. If you're not paying careful attention, uh, you will not free him, and if you kill the wrong rock, your raid will get a horrible amount of AoE damage and that player will die. If you manage to scrape through these mechanic basics, you should have killed Susano. Personally, the damage feels right and I really enjoyed the leveling challenge. Again, I'm very excited to see the extreme mode of this fight. It's really hands-on, and unlike Bismarck in Heavenswood, this one actually requires a bit of skill and teamwork. I very much like the tank separate um, ability there with the active time maneuver. It allows the tanks to really shine in this one, and the DPS to see if they are, you know, pulling the same sort of weight that they need to to finish off fights like this. However, for more videos like this, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.